What is up guys? My name is Michael Goffrin. I am a software engineer at Instagram. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about what resources can help you make it into the tech industry. So tech is like one of those industries that don't really require a lot of formal um, qualifications. It's not like being a doctor or a lawyer where you have to go to law school um, and medical school. So in tech, it really depends on your prior experience more than anything. So I'm going to break it down. In terms of what you want to do, that's sort of relevant to find out where you want to go. So when I was starting out as a programmer, I actually was a super interested in mobile. Mobile was blowing up all over the world. And this was like seven years ago. And um, everyone was talking about mobile. Like Instagram was had just been made recently and Uber, Lyft, these kinds of apps that could only be created through a mobile experience. So for me, mobile was really what was I, I was interested in. So to, because I knew that track, I figured out courses along that way to, to, uh, to try to improve and start there. So what I did is I looked up like online courses for mobile development, how to learn about it, and I found out about a Stanford class. So I took this Stanford class online and it's free, completely free, on iTunes University called like Developing iOS 7 Apps. And from that I learned all about iOS programming. I built like a sample project that they had and then I ended up building up my own projects. And it's so easy to do and we always forget that. Like there's so many good online resources available. So basically after that I used that iOS experience and um, just combined it with some more CS focused core work, core curriculum that I had and ended up getting a job later on. Um, so one of the things I would recommend is just looking for online resources, online free classes. There are like good beginner classes on like Udemy um, and uh, Coursera. I think some of the really good ones that iOS Stanford course I took, um, that one I highly recommend if anyone wants to learn how to develop iOS apps. There is one on full stack web development, um, the Odin project. They're really well known for basically taking what a programming bootcamp has, which is an intensive course for learning about programming and putting all the curriculum available free online for anyone to use. Um, so that's another, uh, another resource I would recommend people to try out. Um, so those are kind of like low tier, not too high cost uh, options. Um, cracking the coding interview that's like a book more for interview questions so a little bit after you do some projects and stuff you'll be actually getting on to interviews and you'll need some resource to perform well and cracking the coding interview is really good for that um, and lead code lead code is uh, invaluable it has a lot of questions about what questions are asked in programming company interviews and it's just a super amazing resource. Um, so those are pretty much sort of the free-ish tier and the low cost tier. Um, kind of mid-range in terms of how to get better at programming. One would be to enroll in like a formal course. Um, so I know a lot of community colleges have like formal courses, but they're not as strict, I would say, as, um, as what you might find in like a more intensive university program. Programming boot camps are also really well known. I found that programming boot camps tend to not be worth it for people if the program itself is not that good. It's like everyone is trying to make a programming boot camp these days, and a lot of times recruiters are swamped by programming boot camp graduates, so they can't really give them a position so easily. Um, so I would definitely caution from some of them. I think like the really good ones. Um, the more exclusive ones, the ones where you have to actually know a lot of programming beforehand are worth it if you can get in and stay there. Something like App Academy or Hack Reactor even. Um, those ones are much more like fine-grained about the people that they'll take in. And then I think another, the last option, which is a little bit more expensive, but I think could be worth it is like a master's degree at a university. like. Um, that is a formal qualification that shows that you can be a programmer and you can also pursue internships at the same time um, which a lot of companies are looking for people who are 
um, trying to be interns. So I would highly recommend. Um, yeah. Um, right now it's easier than ever. There's so many online master's degree programs. I think Georgia Tech really pioneered this and it's super low cost. So you can in like a year, just at your home, learn how to do all the things that a regular Georgia Tech master's student is doing for a fraction of the cost and at your own flexibility. So, you know, like an average master's degree takes like two years. I don't know, I feel like you could just stay at home for a little bit and do a master's degree in like a year and a half. And yeah, you're pretty much as good as any graduate that ends up going to a program. So, yeah. Um, so those are pretty much a background of sort of the resources that you're looking at from like less expensive resources up to more expensive. Um, but I, I do think that it's important that you have the drive and dedication to keep improving because it's going to be a long road. Um, there's no way it's you're just going to instantly become like a programmer, but it really is worth it. And it might feel hard at times, but it's a path that we all have to take to reach our destination. So thank you guys for listening and hope to uh, hear from you soon.